How do you make sure when you're building an iPhone app that your uh, developers don't screw it all up when they do uh, point 0.1, point 0.2, the next version? Well, you need functional testing so that you make sure that all your functions keep working. And Sosta does just that, and we're going to hear how they do that and how they also do performance testing right now. Who are you? My name is Ken Gardner. I'm the founder and executive chairman of Sosta Incorporated. Sosta provides uh, performance and functional testing tools for modern web and mobile applications. And who are you? My name is Tal Broda, and I'm the vice president of engineering at Sosta. I've been working with Ken since 2002 and been writing software since I was like 11. Wow. So let's get into the demo. So Robert, cool. what we're going to show you is how we can record and play back on these devices. And we'll start with a simple recording. So CloudTest is running here. It's running in a browser. You don't need to download or install anything to run it. It's kind of an advanced AJAX application. And I'm going to start by recording a relatively simple application which we've built. So we have the device agent running on this device. This is its sole purpose is to launch the application that is under test. And these devices are sitting on a harness, but you can see they're not tethered or anything. And uh, we're going to... So they're all connected through wireless. wireless. Yeah, everything is wireless. So you could record and play back any application anywhere in the world. So when I click on the record button, we launch the application that we want to test. And then to record, I just need to start interacting with the application on the device. So I can you know, type my name, say done. Of course, it's auto-correcting me because I'm Israeli. Click done again, and then I can log in. And you can see that as I'm doing that, all of the gestures that I did are getting captured here automatically without you know, changing anything. Then I can do more things like I can scroll up, and we'll see the scroll up here. I can scroll down. And we even support things like you know, swiping left and right. So we actually built these features where you can swipe left, and then you can swipe right again, and then you can log out. So that's it. You know, we finished building a clip. We can stop the recording. It's going to launch back the device agent. So now it's ready to do another recording. So that's how you record a test. Does that make okay. sense? Yeah. Then you can go to all of these things and you know uh, see exactly what we recorded. We could switch this maybe to look at it in more of a list view, so you can see we recorded the swipe left, the swipe right, and all of those things. And to play it back, we take this clip, which you can see is kind of a visual programming language that we came up with, and you can open it in what we call the composition editor. And in the composition editor, really is the, the UI that allows us to take clips together and play them from multiple locations, perhaps at the same time. So we make this be like you know, visual editing from music or media, where you can lay out test clips on a track and ma make it really interactive. Yep. So we're going to play it back, and you can see again it's over the air. This device is not connected to anything; it's not plugged in. And we also did not need to jailbreak the app. And now the cloud test is playing back this thing exactly as I was recording it. And it's doing it a little bit faster than I was because you know, we wanted to be connected to a continuous integration system in which you'll be able to go through a vast array of you know, functional tests in a very short amount of time to kind of assure yourself as a developer that you really have everything that you want in the application. Does that make, does that make sense? Absolutely. So let's do another clip and record another test application that we built. We call this one uh, Touches. Yeah, this because is from the sample library that Apple provides. Okay. And so we've taken, because we had the code for that, we could add the library to it. And it's an application that has you know, three squares on the screen. And then what you can do with that is you can start moving them around. And you'll see I'll move this one relatively slow. I'll take this one, move it kind of fast. And with this one, I'll do a pinch to zoom in and out. And then I can also take these guys and maybe rotate them a little bit. And maybe move this one fast again. So okay. you'll see that we recorded all of these gestures that you were doing. And because we recorded them uh, with very high precision, we actually captured this uh, kind of large array of all of the points that I took on the screen. And then when we play it back, again, let's take this one, put it in a composition editor. And when we play it back, you'll see that it's going to play it back exactly in the same uh, speed and exactly the same precision as I was doing that. So obviously, if you want to do anything uh, more advanced, like uh, you know, test games or test any application that has complex gestures, now there's a technology to kind of do that. Got it. Does that make sense? Yep. So let's watch this. As you can see, this one I moved kind of slow. The next one is going to be a little bit faster than the other one. And then you can see the pinch to zoom that we did. 
and then we can take this thing and you know kind of rotate them. So yeah. support for one finger gestures, multi finger gestures, all of those things are uh, supported within this environment. And really the the ability to be inside the application and you know take these events exactly as the user did uh -huh. them and then play back to validate that they continue to work is extremely unique. No, that's cool. Well, I, I love you guys because our show is called Small Teams, Big Impacts, and you're helping development teams ha um, keep the amount of testing that they have to do down to a minimum. Um, explain a little bit about what you guys do for people who don't know what SESTA is. Yeah, we're in the test automation business. Um, initially, uh, we've made our mark as performance testing. Uh, we have a product called Cloud Test. Cloud Test can do performance testing against websites from hundreds of users to millions of users. Uh, we, um, we've done extremely well with that. The product uh, provides real-time analytics that allow people to do testing against their production uh, websites. Many of the websites that you see uh, on TV every night uh, being pushed by various companies were the back end of that uh, was performance tested by us. What we're now introducing is a new uh, feature of cloud test called touch test. Touch test is a functional testing tool that's designed to fully automate the testing of Apple iOS applications and Android uh, applications uh, just a little bit later. Okay, and tell me about the kinds of tests that this lets you do because um, for instance, um, some of my iPhone apps are crashing right now if they're running other apps that are also using the camera. So I start running Path and Instagram, and then I open the uh, camera app, and I take a picture, and everything goes away. And that's a weird bug. It only happens once in a while. Is that what this is for? Or is this to figure out to that you didn't change some code that keeps something from logging in? We could certainly help you recreate the scenario that causes that crash to occur. Uh, more typically, we're used by somebody to test a single application and to uh, build a functional regression test that allows them, as they do new releases and add features to that application, 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, or 1.5 to 1.6, if it's a banking application as an example, that application has to absolutely work uh, with, with perfection uh, and we allow people to set up the testing so that they hi have high confidence that that is true. Now in our demo, um, and you can explain how this works, mm -hmm. you actually are able to capture, you know, uh, button clicks, yes. zooms, rotates, multi-finger, multi all sorts of fun UI stuff, right? Yeah, so absolutely. So we have a library that the application developer, you know, can compile into his application. Now this is not an elaborate setup or anything. We have a script that essentially does that. And then because we're inside the application, we can see all of the events that the operating system, iOS, actually generates on all of the UI elements that are inside the app. And then we can capture those events with exactly the same you know, way that you did them. And that means that we'll capture the velocity that you moved something on the screen. We'll capture exactly how you did pinch. You know, we support any UI element and any you know, complex gesture. Right. Are you also capturing what's happening underneath the UI, uh, the network connectivity, the performance of the processor, mm -hmm. how much RAM is, or how much memory is still left you know, if I'm t doing a Instagram, for instance, mm -hmm. if I take a thousand photos and all of a sudden my memory's full, right. it's going to give a different error than if I only took two pictures, yes. right? Right. Yeah, absolutely. And because you know we're a very uh, performance-oriented company, really our flagship product, you know, Cloud Test is used for doing load and functional testing and performance testing. We have a lot of you know uh, performance in our DNA of the company, and so we made sure that when we do these uh, gestures and stuff, we also capture all of the you know uh, memory footprint and the network traffic that is going on between the application and whatever is serving it on the other side. Yeah, yeah Robert, we're in the process of, of uh, following a patent on what we've, what we've done here. It's called Precision Capture and Playback. Uh, it allows you to completely duplicate the velocity and the total precision of Apple internally generates a very large array of um, events internally yeah. And we capture those events, and that's what we're playing back. So it could not be more accurate. When when I actually capture them, so let's say I'm I'm logging in, that's one event, mm -hmm. and then I type a username and password, yeah. that's one event, 
and then I uh, zoom in, that's a different event. Can I edit each of these events separately? Absolutely. And can I, maybe I didn't hit the login button per perfectly and it captured that. So can I go back and just recapture that piece Well, of in it? fact, that's what we recommend for most people. Um, capture and playback is the simplest case. But what you really want to be able to do in order to get good test coverage is you want to be able to take those events and compose them into something that's more complex, that goes through more pieces of the product, uh, that really exercises the user interface. And, is, and it's that coverage that gives you high confidence that the application still works the way that it's intended. When you're architecting an app or building an app, how do you... Um, how do you, do you build these tests into the code or, or do you do that after the code's written? Are, do, you, do you think about it at that level? Or? Many people do what's called test-driven oh, development. Yeah. And, and, That's where I was and in, and in that model, what you're doing is, is you're adding something to the app and you're building oh, the test to make sure that it's correct at the same time. And so both of those kind of come along uh, very incrementally over, over a period of time and, you know, Complex software just doesn't get built quickly. Complex software gets built a little bitty piece at a time yeah. with you proving that the, the structure and the, the architecture of it is still sound all the way through. Uh, some of the apps, for instance, if you have an airline app and you're buying an airline ticket, there's business rules that might say if this app doesn't complete within 15 minutes yes. or 15, mm -hmm. 50 seconds, cut the user off and get rid of them. Yes. Are, are you able to look at those kinds of business rules underneath that aren't Absolutely. UI? Absolutely. In fact, we can uh, recreate the state that you want because CloudTest is an application that can interact with HTTP web services. Then we can actually make web services calls to the backend system that you're testing, set up the exact status that you want or the exact state that you want in the application before you did the event. And then because we're inside the application, we can do really complex validations to wait for exactly a number of elements on the screen. Or we can do waits for something to appear on the screen. Or just wait for a timeout, like you said, and then cut the application. So all of that is entirely possible. Can you do anything funny with the bandwidth? Because one problem with uh, mobile apps is you're walking around and all of a sudden the bandwidth goes away, especially if you're on a certain carrier. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and and mm. uh, you know, it, this happens all the time, right? Yeah. And th then yeah. the app gives an error. Can you? Can you simulate a bandwidth going away and see what happens to the app? Or? That's stuff that we're still working on, okay. and uh, it's coming down the line. We don't have that just yet. Okay. Um, One thing that, yeah. that, that is going to be part of the, the shipping uh, product uh, here in about six to eight weeks is the ability to do the testing over a cell network. Okay. Okay. And so uh, uh, right now you need to be on a Wi-Fi network. Right now, right now you need to be on a Wi-Fi, uh, although we don't require jailbreaking and we don't require tethering. So you speak to the device via an IP address. The carrier gateways do not let servers talk directly to devices. Otherwise, um, otherwise people could do denial of service attacks on your phone. And, uh, and because of that, we need to switch the communication to be the other way. So the device talks to the server to get the test instead of the other way around. We should talk about what, what actually goes on the phone that you're testing. Uh, is that an app? Button? There's a little library um, called the Touch Test Driver that gets dropped into the app. We have a utility called Make App Touch Testable that you run and it'll insert uh, the library into uh, the main uh, of, the, of the iOS application. And is there anything added to the code? Do I need to add So that, lab, that uh, script that Ken mentioned actually adds one you know, um, line to start the touch test driver. And then we also have a component we call uh, device agent, which runs on the phone. Uh, currently in the demo that we showed you, it's a native application. But by the time we ship, it's going to be a web app. So you can always get it from anywhere without installing anything. And its purpose is to launch the application that you're testing and then yeah. come back to the foreground. And is this a good way um, to? to figure out where things are slowing down in an app? Oh, know? absolutely, yeah. For instance, in a video game, you want to make sure that it's a fluid experience all the way through, mm -hmm. right? But maybe it's hanging at a certain point. Mm -hmm. Does it help you figure out what code is calling that? It, it yeah, does, absolutely. Does it get that granular? It from, could, yeah. From gesture to gesture, we're recording all of the timings of, of everything. So if, for instance, as you go up levels of some game, if something all of a sudden slow, slows down, you can start to take a look at the individual, the timing of the individual gestures, and perhaps there's something you've done uh, that's that's causing that to be slower than it than it needs to be. Can you um, run them back at more than real time? I noticed that you're, you, it already ran back a little bit faster yes. than we recorded them, but can you 
really speed that up so you can run thousands of tests overnight or something like that? Within the limits of, ha of the device's ability to, s to keep up. Okay. Right, so if you, 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 know, if you, if you uh, go 1,000 uh, gestures a second, none of these devices will keep up with that and the right. test will fail. Okay. Uh, but so within, within the limits of what the application can keep up with, yes. And then um, you capture all sorts of data if, if it crashes or does something abnormal, right? Yes, yeah, so before, if uh, the application crashed, before we actually bring back the device in, we capture all of the data that we need to ensure that the developer has enough information to debug why it crashed. And that's very important. That's the number one reason, you know, apps are getting thrown out of the app store in the approval process is crashes. Yeah. So. Um, is there anything else that a developer needs to know about how, how this might change his or her work? Well, I think that this now gives you the ability to really, you know, test applications before you send them out to the marketplace. Test everything about them, recreate the state that you need, and because we have a visual program like programming language that we showed in the demo, it is not just visual, it's a complete programming language. So you can do conditionals, you can put transactions to measure exactly how much time each thing takes, you can put validations and fail the application. So now you have a complete environment to ensure that your application has high quality. That's interesting. W one of the apps, I think the Gmail app, failed on login because they didn't switch from the test environment to the production environment. Mm -hmm. Does it let you do that kind of test to make sure that doesn't that mistake doesn't happen again? Or? We quite often test against people's production websites. Okay. And the reason for that is because that environment, that combination of firewall and network and all of the components that are in that stack, only no one has two versions of that. It's too expensive. So yeah. you must do, in order to get a valid performance test, you have to do it there. And that would certainly be possible uh, in the Gmail case uh, as well. One, one, one really important point here. One of, one of the reasons we founded the company originally was because as a team, we just couldn't believe how breathtakingly expensive testing tools were. Yeah. And so affordability has been one of our major, major uh, company strategies. A, a seven device iOS starter kit will go for $10,000. And in addition to that, for the single developer, we'll add a single device to Cloud Test Lite, which is our free version. So if you are a single developer building an iPad app, then Cloud Test Lite, which is free, uh, is downloadable from our website, and it has everything that you need to do functional testing against your mobile application. You just mentioned iPad. We didn't even talk about this works on iPhone, iTouch. iPad, iPod iP Touch, uh, iPad, iPhone, uh, all, uh, you know, all the recent versions from uh, three and, uh, the 3G and above. The code between iPhone and iPad is probably very similar, but you would need to make separate tests for the larger form factor than uh, yeah. So form. some applications are universal, which means you know when you run them on the iPad, you just get that one x two x button, and it's the same. But most app developers want to build a separate application. So whatever is similar between the iPad and the iPhone application, you don't have to change the code. You can reuse a lot of that. And because, like I said, we have a complete programming language, which happens to be visual, you can actually create usable components, those clips that we showed, and then you can use them within other clips as reusable pieces. Yeah. If you uh, run tests overnight and you, you want to do hundreds of uh, yes. iterations of the test, and let's say it crashes at 2 in the morning, can it restart the app and s continue yes. on? Yes, it on does. Yeah, in fact, we, we uh, will deliver as part of this and are using ourselves today. Uh, this is part of a continuous integration process. Uh, we have integration with Jenkins, and our regression testing runs uh, twice a day uh, as part of our, our continuous build process. Okay. And does it blame anybody for breaking the build? I remember that was a big <laughs> deal at Microsoft. Yeah. If you broke the build, you would get a, a dunce cap. You know, I've, I've, like I've worked in, in uh, I worked in a company a long time ago that uh, they had a big rubber turkey, and they would hang it over your desk if you broke the build. Uh, and and uh, I personally believe in that, but this is a a, a more PC generation. <laughs> we don't do that stuff anymore. Very yeah, cool. Yeah, but absolutely, <laughs> in the continuous integration system, you can see between each test run what were the transactions that went in, and then you can see the developers that did that and in fact we have ways today that if the build fails we'll just undo that transaction send the code back to the developer and say maybe you should think about this again because these tests didn't work and so the entire product continues to be you know stable while the developer has a chance to fix that. Oh that's really interesting. Yeah. So there's a team tool part of this, right? That yeah, so we developers. integrate, we have a Jenkins plugin, so you can see all of the results of the test that failed in an iframe that comes up inside Jenkins. It looks just like JUnit test, but now you have full test coverage for you know functional, performance, and mobile. 
Are you thinking about how you work with other companies who are doing other kinds of testing? For instance, New Relic is watching your cloud infrastructure sure. and making sure that you know, in India, you're having just as good an experience mm -hmm. as in San Francisco. New, New Relic is a partner, and on the test analytics side, our um, performance dashboards, we will pull in their real-time feed uh, and show all of that data uh, in a single dashboard. It is really useful to be able to look at the, the performance, the average response time of an application as, per, as, as volume of traffic goes up and the performance goes up in almost every case, one of the underlying resources, memory, CPU, bandwidth, one of those goes up with it. Right. Okay, you've exhausted a resource uh, or uh, you have run out of something, you don't have enough bandwidth, whatever it is, and, and the charting uh, will make that very apparent very quickly. Very cool, this really helps a small team make sure that they yes. can ship on time. Uh, where do I learn more about what you guys are doing? SOASTA.com. Very cool. And you're, are you on Twitter and Facebook and all the YouTube, we are. Google Plus? We are. Yeah. Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. Thank you so much for coming mm -hmm. out and thanks for what you're doing for uh, developers and small teams. Thanks for having Thank us. Thank you, Robert. Thank you. Nice to see you.